happy Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I am, my battery's almost dead. I don't know how that happens. Anyway, I am coming on after um, school and it was a pretty good day. It was kind of an, I don't know, it was kind of a weird day, but it was a good day um, with the kiddos. And I wanted to let you know what I kind of was thinking I have in store next. I want to do a um, another book uh, books that I use at the beginning of the year and uh, maybe a couple of chapter books that I'm either starting or have read uh, so far this year. It looks like I'm still recording. I think I am, but my battery is getting close to dying, so I probably should stop pretty soon. Anyway, that's what will be in the vlog this week. Um, I'm trying to do two a week still while school's going. Um, not a lot of editing that I do, so it, that part makes it a little bit faster. Um, anyway, I have a couple other things I wanted to talk about, some things that I've made um, and some projects I have going on, but I'm not sure that that will be this week because I kind of put them on hold um, because we're not back in person yet, but we'll see. So I will hop on a little bit later and talk to you about some books. Hello, I am back. It is Monday, uh, past dinner time. I'm really hungry, but I just finished grilling some chicken. Hopefully this is an okay angle. I'm trying to get it so it's nice and light because my last couple videos have been a little darkish. Anyway, I am going to show you some other books that I like to use. Um, in the classroom the first couple weeks of school. Now, I haven't read all of these yet. Some of them I'm saving until we're back in person together. I'm gonna use this first one as a fan because it really works. Um, I'm gonna leave these uh, as we come back in person. However, um, I also do not hesitate to pull them out during the year because we need refreshers. So. Without further ado, this first book I'm going to talk about is from Boys Town. Now, I ordered it just on Amazon. I'll link all the books. I always try to link as many as I can. Um, even if I didn't get them from Amazon, I'm putting them on there because that's a lot of times the easiest way to and cheapest way to get a book. Anyway, this one is called Decibella and Her Six Inch Voice. And um, like I said, it's part of the Boys Town curriculum, and we do use Boys Town. Um, in my district, but I would have picked this book. I actually owned this book before we did that, so it is a great book. Um, it's about a character, her name is Isabella, but they call her Decibella because, you guessed it, she's extremely loud. And everything she says, she screams, I'm done with my test, and do you have any books about squirrel monkeys? And she's at the library and everybody's telling her to shh. So, as the book goes on, she uh, is just, you know, yelling everywhere she goes, I'm home, Mom, and to Grandma on the phone. So her teacher does a lesson about, um, well, okay, first she talks to just Decibella, but then they practice in class together. So the teacher has her stay in at recess so she can talk about her talking uh, being way too loud. And she gives her some examples of when to use what level of voice. And she has her practice. This is the key to this book. She has her practice by saying the word slurp -a doodle which is hilarious, obviously. So she has her say slurp -a doodle in different levels of voice. Um, she talks about a whisper, a six-inch voice, a table talk voice, a strong speaker and outside. I couldn't read, they were like written in kind of goofy font up here, but then she goes through each of them. And when the kids are uh, doing table talk, they practice and they talk about um, what times are appropriate to use, what voice level. Um, when you're outside, that's one thing. When you're a strong speaker and you're talking to the whole class, that's that would be your strong speaker voice. And we uh, used this last year, I think, it was either last year or the year before for the first time. I don't remember. We started Boys Town 
last year. I think I actually did buy it like early in the summer maybe, but then was like super pleasantly surprised that it was um, by them. Anyway, so uh, Decibella practices in all of her different areas uh, that she is throughout the day. And I like the six inch voice. We use that all year and I would say to the kids, please use your six inch voice. That means somebody six inches away from you. Oh, I guess I won't be able to use that this year. Use your table talk voice. Um, six inch voice is so that someone who's six inches away from you can hear you talking just fine like this. So we practice that a lot. And um, that was really pretty helpful. So it's a really cute book. And um, there are a lot of good books from Boys Town. This is just one of them. I have several others. I want to say My Mouth is a Volcano that I talked about in another um, vlog. I don't know. I think I just used that one. I don't think that's by Boys Town. The next ones I have, this one has seen some better days. I've used it lots of years, but Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. And there's also this one, Have Fun, Molly Lou Mellon. And Molly Lou Mellon is adorable. She reminds me of one of the who, like Cindy Lou Who. She's just cute like that. <clears throat> but she has a grandmother who always said to her, Stand tall, walk as proudly as you can, and the world will look up to you. Well, Molly Lou Mellon is teeny tiny. She's just this little tiny girl. And so she always has listened to her grandmother, and so she walks tall, carries herself well, and um, just trusted her grandmother that uh, the world would, would um, walk tall with her. So she also has very big buck teeth, and her grandmother says, just smile big. It doesn't matter. You smile and the world will smile with you. Look at the picture. I mean, come on. That's hilarious. So she practices balancing pennies on her teeth and she's so proud of herself. And then um, her singing voice is not great. And her grandma says, just sing loud and proud. The world will sing with you. And believe in yourself because then the world will believe in you too. So she did. She believed in herself. She walked tall. She did all the things. And then one day she had to move. And so at her new school, she uh, met a not so nice boy named Ronald Durkin. And if there is a Ronald Durkin out there watching this vlog, I'm so sorry I didn't write you into this story. You can blame Patty Lovell. That was all her. Anyway, I'm guessing um, maybe she had a Ronald in her life. But this guy is just not nice to Molly Lou, and he calls her shrimpo, and he tells her that her teeth make her look like a bucky tooth beaver. So instead of getting mad, pouting, and walking away, she just shows, well, yeah, but look what I can do. And she balances pennies on her teeth to show the other kids. And then uh, when she was singing, uh, Ronald made fun of her voice and she just knocked him down with her loudest honk and quack. I'm sorry, quack. He said she sounded like a honk honk. And then Ronald said she was making the snowflake all wrong that she was making in class, but she just really outdid herself and made this beautiful, wonderful snowflake and all the kids loved it. And even in the end, Ronald Durkin actually brings her a stack of pennies for her teeth. So she won him over finally by listening and following the advice of her grandmother and she writes her grandmother in the end to tell her grandma you were right everything worked out just fine. And in the second book Have Fun Molly Lou Mellon it's uh, very similar she's um, well in that she's uh, communicating with her grandmother. Her grandmother always told her um, when I was young, this is all about playthings. And when I was young, I didn't have a uh, fancy action figure and dolls like you do. I just made them out of flowers and things like that. And so Molly thinks, oh, okay, well, I can do that. And so she does things just like her grandmother. And the whole book is uh, goes on and on and just talks about how her grandmother encouraged her to use her imagination and play outside and do all the things. So here she's making a dollhouse because her grandma says, well, I didn't have a fancy store-bought dollhouse. I just made my own outside. And so Molly does too. And then she meets a friend and uh, her uh, the, they were new next door neighbors. And so Gertie is the little girl. 
and she, sorry, I thought I heard a dog. Um, she comes over to play and she says, I'm bored and I want to do this and I want to do that. And Molly, um, home phone, um, just tells her, you know, come play and come play outside and let me show you what I do here. And let's lay and look at the stars and I'm sorry, not the stars, the clouds. And so they do and they learn to really appreciate their imaginations and having fun and doing things outdoors and relying on just making their own fun. And in the end, Molly sees her grandmother in the clouds and she um, realizes once again that grandma was right. So really super cute book series. There might be more, I don't know. I don't have more than these two. The next one is probably one of our favorite books of all time in my classroom, and I've only had it for a couple of years, but oh my gosh, if you do not know this book, you're missing out. This one is amazing, great icebreaker for the kids, great way to show them that teachers can be silly too and that they don't have to be afraid around us. We're just people that are goofy, just like them. Anyway, this is called Book With No Pictures, and it's by B.J. Novak hilarious so it truly is a book with no pictures so i'll read you just the first <clears throat> sorry couple of pages this is a book with no pictures i would obviously read it slower for the kids it might seem like no fun to have someone read you a book with no pictures it probably seems boring and serious except here's how books work everything the words say the person reading the book has to say no matter what this is where it gets good that's the deal, that's the rule. So that means even if the words say, blork, wait, what? That doesn't even mean anything. And by now the kids are already laughing. Blurf, wait a second, what? This isn't the kind of book I wanted to read. And I have to say every word the book says, uh-oh. And so now the kids are hooked and it goes on and on and on. And the teacher is reading all this ridiculous nonsense like, I'm a monkey who taught myself to read. Hey, I'm not a monkey. And now I'm reading this to you, reading you this book with my monkey mouth and my monkey voice. That's not true. I'm not a monkey. And it goes on and on and on. Super silly. And now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A song? Do I really have to sing a? And then it goes and you have to sing all the glug 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 my face is a bug i eat ants for breakfast right off the road and the kids laugh and laugh and laugh so and my dogs bark and bark and bark anyway um the end is even funny it says the end bonk i don't want to say that and it's just great anyway my book is my cover's falling off here but if you do not have this one i read this to my third graders and they laugh every bit as hard as i imagine first second and even fourth graders they begged me to pull this book out like i don't know all the time and read it so i did i reread it a couple times because they thought it was so funny i'm going to stop there for just a minute and i will be back Okay, I am back. I'm only gonna show three more books right now and then I will have to do yet another one because I haven't even talked about chapter books or anything. I just got a book problem. Not a problem, just a problem with not enough time for all of the books I love. Okay, so two more bucket filler books. Um, this one is by the same people. I guess they all are. Yeah, they all are because it's a trademark. So uh, this is the second one, I think, in the series. Uh, I showed you the how full, or no, be a bucket filler. Anyway, how full is your bucket is this one. So it goes next in the series. And um, this is about Felix and his little sister. And Felix is really mad because his sister comes in and really wants to play with him but she doesn't know how to play the same way he does because he, she's very much younger than him. And so she ruins his tower and he gets really upset and he yells and isn't very nice to her. And so I believe it is the grandpa. Yeah, grandpa is the one who reminds him about bucket filling and bucket dipping. And this is a really great book. It just kind of is a good reminder. I pull this one out. Uh, probably September, October, and we just kind of review and talk about, um, just review how to fill a bucket, how not to 
dip into somebody's bucket and we just review. And then this one is one that I, it says a dollar on the sticker here, so I think I got this at the library book sale, maybe, or Goodwill, not sure. Uh, no, not Goodwill, not with that sticker. So anyway, um, bucket filling from A to Z, the key to being happy. And what I do with this one sometimes is, um, I've had this for a while, it's a scholastic book, but like I said, I didn't order it from them, I got it, um, from a, the library sale, and I'll just go through a couple of letters a day. And so this, we might do a couple pages in um, for two weeks, even longer sometimes. So we talk about just, um, you know, what does it mean to uh, be a friend? What does it mean to give, for G is give, give someone a big bright smile or a little bit of your time. Anyway, just kind of reinforces the whole bucket fillers. Uh, Thing. Anyway, so this one they really like too. Um, sometimes we will make a, an ABC book to go along with whatever theme I'm teaching. So for instance, if we're talking about animals of the desert, we might make an ABC book. It's a great way to pull in all kinds of different uh, information because it's so cross-categorical because all the letters of the alphabet are represented. And then the last book I want to talk about today is one of my very favorite books. I've had this one for a few years. It is uh, written by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by E.B. Lewis, and I usually, I don't know, I'm not great about pointing out the illustrators sometimes, but this one is amazing. This book is called Each Kindness, and it's won awards, and it is so good. It's the kind of book that does not have a happy ending, but it's a good, uh, consequences book and what happens is this teacher and I'm going to show you some of the illustrations because they are outstanding um, a teacher gets a brand new girl in her class and her name is Maya and here's the picture of her as she enters school the first day and the kids right away notice that Maya isn't wearing clean nice fresh first day of school clothes she's kind of got some old ragged clothes on and her shoes you know don't look so great either and they just kind of are put off by her a little bit in fact uh, the girl who is the narrator of the story had the only empty seat next to her and so Maya was uh, given the seat next to her and she said uh, every day after that when Maya came into the classroom I looked away and didn't smile back when Maya smiled at her the kids on the playground were rude and they didn't invite her to play and even when she asked they said no we don't want you to play with us and they whispered secrets just how kids can sometimes be and um, a lot of times you know if one is doing it then others will join in and you know how that goes so um, one day Maya brought new jacks to school and she said hey I have a high bouncer does anybody want to play and they all said no we don't want to play and so she played by herself and she really tried so hard to fit in and they whispered about her and they said no she's not my friend and they were just not nice to Maya so one day at school their teacher um, did a lesson with them and the lesson I'm trying to, I'm not gonna read all the parts but the lesson was about how when you drop a stone into water it has a ripple effect and the teacher said kindness is like that kindness when you do an act of kindness for someone um, it ripples out and it makes them feel better and then uh, you just spread that kindness out into the world and around about that time Maya's desk was empty and none of the kids you know thought probably a whole lot about it but then days went by and day after day Maya's desk remained empty and um, the teacher Mrs. Elbert had during the kindness, kindness lesson with the stone had had each of the kids go around and drop a stone into the water and say one thing that they had done that was kind even if it was something very small and so when it came this girl's turn she said I I'm not kind I, I haven't done anything kind and Mrs. Elbert said each kindness makes the world a little bit better and so Maya did not return to school and then one day the teacher said her family had to move away
way. And so the little girl learned that even the kindnesses that aren't shown uh, to someone take away from the world. Just like if, you know, a kindness done will always be there and will hopefully have a ripple effect. Each kindness done and not done, like every girl somewhere holding a small gift out to someone that, and that someone turning away from it. So, yes, it's a sad ending, but I will tell you what. The kids in third grade, when you finish this story, and I would say probably third grade would be the youngest I would read this to, um, and up, not a sound. And some are crying, and I'm usually crying. Just such a great lesson. So I then can have this book to reference back for the rest of the year and say, remember Maya. And that's all you have to say because the kids remember. So hate to leave on kind of a sad note, but such a powerful book. And again, I would say third grade on up is would be amazing for this book, third through sixth maybe. Second grade, I don't know if they would grasp it quite as well, but you second grade teachers, you know. I used to teach second grade, but it was a long time ago. Anyway, I'm going to end the vlog here. If you found anything helpful, if you found a book that you want to buy and try out or you already own and you forgot you had, uh, give me a thumbs up give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing so I can grow my channel. Yes, Squirt says yes. Please subscribe. I don't know what she's barking at. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. Don't forget, remain positive about the world we live in and hopefully things will be looking up soon. Bye.